Alrighty guys, welcome back to the channel. As I'm still waiting for some parts, I've got a bit of time to cover some topics and videos that I wanted to, and today I'm gonna to be going over my fuel system. Now, if you were to explore the internet, you would probably find a lot of people saying that what I'm doing is wrong with my fuel system. Uh, some of it is very right, but I just wanna take you through kind of what works, what shouldn't work, and kind of why it all works. So, this car made 1,006 wheel horsepower on the dyno last year. Uh, I kept losing crank signal, so I was never able to turn it up more. We were running 85% ethanol fuel. Um, we've turned it up since. I've seen like 1,100 and something pounds an hour of fuel, so we're definitely moving some fuel. But uh, let's start at the back of the car here. I'll show you the pump setup, and then I'll take you through kind of what we got going on up front, and hopefully you learn about how not to do this. Alrighty, so this is the trunk of the car and this is where all of the magic happens. So what we've got is, I think this is a 13 gallon fuel cell. It's made by Performance World and we've actually got their dual pump hanger here. Now what's nice about this hanger is uh, it's very reasonably priced and in fact for all of you Americans out there, check out Performance World, a Canadian company, Canadian prices so you can get a pretty good deal on parts because your guys' dollar is worth so much. Um, but on this dual pump hanger, what I've done is I've actually hose clamped a third pump to it and ran it up out the return. So this is now a triple. So we've got a 450 as a primary pump and then we have two fifth, uh, a second 450 and a 340, which are staged outputs, which I'll go into in a minute. Now those all run through dash six line uh, into this dash 10 ORB block and this kind of exits at a nasty right angle into that guy there, which is a dash eight feed line. That goes all the way up to the front of the car. I've got a single performance world filter on it, which is not rated for this much flow. Um, this guy is just a vent over here. This is our return line, which is a dash six. And again, I'll go more into that in a couple seconds. All right, now, staged pumps, what's the deal with that? So essentially, this pump runs all the time, and at like four pounds of boost, I have the other 450 and the 340 come into play. Now, this car is essentially a race car. It doesn't really get street driven very much. It does once in a while, but not a ton. Um, so the majority of the time, we're driving around on just this pump. Uh, so you can imagine you have got one 450 worth of fuel coming back into the tank. Now when those two pumps kick on, uh, first off the reason that they come on at such a low pressure is that I wanted all of my boost fueling to have the exact same fuel pressure. These guys probably don't need to come on until like 10 PSI, but I didn't want a weird bump in fuel pressure uh, when I was trying to tune the car, so I've just kept it simple and tried this, and I wasn't sure if it would work, but it actually does. All right, now up at the front of the car, we have got this fuel rail, which gets fed by the dash eight line that goes to the back of the car. We've got a jumper across here. We've got another fuel rail, and that all exits into the fuel pressure regulator. Now I'm running Bosch 210 injectors, which have been absolutely fantastic. Uh, I pickle them with pump gas over the winter time, so what I do is I drain all the E85 out of the car, fill it up with 94 octane pump gas, run the car on it for 10 minutes just to make sure all the ethanol is out of the system and store it that way and it worked perfect last year and fingers crossed that it works perfect again this year. Now the holy grail of this whole setup is this tiny aeromotive fuel pressure regulator. So last year I was kind of surprised with the results I had on this thing considering it has a dash six line feeding it and it has a dash six return line. Now if you talk to most people uh, online and you say hey I want to make 600 horsepower they're going to tell you to put a dash 12 feed line and a dash 10 return line uh, so we're making like I say I don't know call it 1100 wheel horsepower now so that's god knows how much flywheel and we're going through a dash 6 return line and for fun I actually called Aeromotive and I was like hey what's the horsepower rating on this regulator and they're like 450 and I told the guy I'm like what if I told you I made a thousand something wheel out of it? And he's like, holy cow, man, that's insane. Um, and so why does that, like, why does that work? Why are we able to make so much power through this tiny regulator? Now, the reason why we can make so much jam on this with that tiny regulator and the very small return line uh, is because of the pump staging. So like I said earlier, this pump is on when we're driving the car and these only come on at four pounds of boost. 
But when you think about this, the 450, as soon as this car is under lots of, lots of load, it's taken 1,100 pounds of fuel. Uh, I don't know how many liters per hour that is, but it's a lot. The 450 is essentially gone. All the fuel coming out of this guy is burning up in the engine. The 340 is almost gone. That fuel is coming into the, obviously getting burned up in the engine as well. So really how much fuel is that return line actually gonna see? Well, it's only really gonna see the 450 and whatever's left of the 340. Um, and obviously these pumps both work at the same time. So it's not like one is being fully used and one isn't, but just for argument's sake. Um, and so that's something that's really cool about staging your pumps like that is you don't need this crazy fuel system. And something I see people get wrong all the time on the internet is that they'll have a low horsepower application, like 600 horsepower, and people are out there telling them to go get dash 10 lines. And, and you know, those big lines are really cost prohibitive, right? So the reason I kept the, the eight feet and the six return in here is just to try it really and see if I could be confident in it. And I'll tell you, I've ran it for a while like this now. I haven't had any issues and I'm very confident in it. So um, I just, I just feel like sometimes people are very easily swayed uh, because I look at this fuel system and I'm like, man, these lines and regulator, this is, this is garbage for how much power I'm making. You know, you see a lot of guys at this horsepower level and they're running like garden hose to the engine. Uh, and especially this car is on ethanol. So it's using another 30 something percent more fuel than if it was on race gas. So um, yeah, I hope that helps to just show you guys uh, how much power you can actually make on an eight feet and a six return on E85. And the trick to that is staging the pumps. Um, and so just a little bit of insight on how the pumps are actually wired. Uh, we've essentially got one fuel pump, uh, like the primary 450 pump, that just runs to the standard Holly fuel pump output. Uh, we've also got a staged pump output out of Holly. That one runs to uh, another relay and that relay triggers both of those other pumps at the exact same time. Uh, I will say that the three pumps is definitely the best part of this fuel system because they provide way more than enough flow. Uh, my lines are definitely wrong. They're definitely undersized. The regulator, definitely wrong, definitely undersized. The single filter, like I think it's rated for like three or 400 liters per hour. How that thing has survived at this power level with the 85, again, I couldn't tell you. I guess it's just a decent quality product. Um, and yeah, as far as fuel pressure down the track, it always goes up perfectly with boost. I haven't had any issues. Uh, we're 43 pounds base pressure. So I think at the end of the track, we're at like 65 or 66 pounds of uh, fuel pressure. Everything looks totally good in that regard. Um, so yeah, if you guys have any questions about this fuel system, let me know. I mean, I wouldn't really do it this way if I was you, and I'll say this is probably the most wrong thing on this entire car. We're pretty much relying on uh, really good fuel pumps and really good injectors. But at the end of the day, that's kind of all we really need for this thing. So until it fails me, I don't have any plans on changing it, uh, but let me know down in the comments below, guys, if there's anything else about this car that you would like to learn about. As you can see, she's missing a couple wheels. We're doing some stuff to it, and I'm gonna update you guys on that soon, if you do care, but I find these videos are kind of more interesting to you guys, these, these kind of random tech videos about different things that I've kind of figured out. So, uh, as always, guys, thanks for checking out the video. Thanks for watching the channel, and I will see you on the next one.